Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to uh, today's uh, Talentpipe webinar. Uh, my name is Scott McCree. I'm the co-founder of Candidate ID, and I'd like to welcome uh, Richard Hutchison, who's the Talent and Innovation Director at Capita. Uh, December, at the end of December last year, uh, Richard and I uh, did a presentation on at the Hiring Hacks conference with the in-house recruitment network. And it was, it was focused on, you know, uh, talent nurture and, you know, how you can, um, you know, how you can fill hard to fill roles, um, you know, using some of the new technology and new approaches that's available today. <clears throat> Very much looking at, you know, as an overall kind of end to end process, you know, how can you, how can you deliver, you know, faster and better hiring? How can you, how can you save time and money in doing that by optimizing you know the entire recruitment process uh, and also how can you get you know first access to talent um so richard on that note um i'd like to hand over to you to take us through the the great case study that you that you have with them um, capita okay thank you scott and hello everybody um my name is richard hutchinson i'm as Scott says, the Talent Generation and Innovation Director for Capital Resourcing. Um, Capital Resourcing provide RPO, managed service, and an internal recruitment solution into Capita. Um, so our organization um, uh, works across contingent workforce, um, PERM, um, and, and all sorts of other kind of variations of the recruitment needs. Um, and what I really wanted to talk to you about today was some of the things that we're doing within Capita, but also then bring to life a case study that we um, shared, as, as Scott said, at, at the seminar in, in December, around something that we did um, for one of our uh, RPO clients, specifically supporting recruitment for social workers. Um, so I guess in terms of setting the scene, um, we're an organisation that, um, as this first slide um, <laughs> highlights, is always trying to look ahead. Um, and rather than developing a kind of reactive recruitment strategy we're really we're really focused on thinking about our future needs and therefore at the heart of that we really need to build a, a an engaged and nurtured database of talent that's going to enable us to fulfill the long-term needs of capital and our clients um, if i just put that into context there we go, sets, why is that not moving down Okay, so if I just put in that into context in terms of um, uh, some of the principles around how we're operating at the moment, at the heart of what we're building is a capita database. Now that database is GD GDPR compliant um, and is focused uh, at a job family level, whether that be IT, whether that be sales, whether that be marketing. Um, and underneath that job family level, we're, we're identifying um, the core pipelines that we need to deliver. So within IT, we might be looking at specifically developing Java developers in London pipeline, for example. Um, and we're taking and developing those pipeline needs from the demand planning that we get from our strategic workforce planning function that's going out to the business, understanding the immediate and long-term needs of Capita and translating that into a recruitment plan. We then look at that recruitment plan and identify where the trends and the commonalities are to enable us to make sure that we focus on building the right talent pipelines that, that are going to add value um, across the capital business and, and, and therefore making sure that we're not building talent pipelines for every single vacancy that potentially exists within capita. That would be too difficult to kind of conduct, but, but really focusing on the, on the requirements where we have fundamentally, if we're recruiting more than 10 people at any one time across the course of the year in one particular location, we're building a talent pipeline for it. So at the heart of our strategy is about how do we go out and engage that talent to bring them into our talent communities and ensure that we can nurture them over time so that when we have a live vacancy, they're ready and waiting for that opportunity. So this model kind of brings to life some of that thinking. So in the background, we have a candidate marketing strategy that is an always on strategy that is going out and targeting those core audiences and coming into our database to enable us to then automate an engagement strategy to take them through the funnel from awareness through to decision. So fundamentally, when we first start to engage with talent in the market, they potentially aren't aware of capital as an organization or the complexity of our organization or the things that we 
um, providing certain services and therefore we are absolutely at that stage not ready to be talking about jobs and what we what we're doing through candidate id is actually building a content strategy relevant to that particular pipeline audience by building a persona map of that target audience understanding their motivations their challenges their aspirations where they consume content the type of content content that will resonate with them so that we can take them from awareness through to decision so that at the point that we do have a live vacancy they're ready to talk to us about the job so we have talent engagement specialists sitting centrally within our organization that are responsible for managing that strategy deploying the the content strategy engaging the candidates in the database making sure that we're recycling our talent across um, candidates that have previously applied um, following up on any events that we attend um, and, and whereby we capture new people but at the heart of that is candidate id and developing that that um, engagement strategy that as i said before resonates specifically with the different personas um, we're using other bits of technology to, to make that as efficient as possible. So we're using things like Pocket Recruiter to enable us to improve our candidate match and rank element so that we find the right talent as quickly as possible. But that plays into how we then use Candidate ID to understand how engaged they are in our process. And I'll, I'll talk about that in a little bit more detail when we come on to the case study. But as I say, at the heart of what we're doing here is about building nurtured engaged talent pipelines that fit the needs of our of our business both now and in the long term so that we can move away from a reactive tactical model and be in a position where we can reduce the time to to fill because actually we've already got the talent identified and engaged um, and also reduce our cost because we're not having to start from scratch every time that we have a new requirement we've actually got a database of talent that we can we can access and bring into the process at the right time. So to kind of bring that to life in terms of how that works within the kind of context of candidate ID, um, hopefully you can see from left to right that what we're starting with is we're going out and engaging talent through a, a, a multiple of different channels and we're bringing those into our candidate ID talent pipeline automation process. We're then engaging with that talent through a number of different mediums, whether that be email, whether, it be, whether that be video content that we're sharing on social media, whether that be infographics or whether that be blogs we're producing or whether that be the content we have on our career site or white papers that we may be are producing, potentially events that we're holding internally and potentially also as we take them through the funnel, things like job descriptions. So all of that kind of content is being pushed through the candidate ID platform to enable us to get to the point where fundamentally we have candidates at higher ready. Because of the content they've consumed, we get to the point that we take them from awareness to decision and therefore they're consuming job content and therefore ready to talk to recruiters about job opportunities. And the great thing about candidate ID is that by scoring the content, we, we enable the platform to automate that, that content strategy so that someone will move through the flow based on the content that they are engaging. And ultimately, therefore, someone that's engaging with lots of our relevant content will move through the funnel at a faster pace and therefore will be ready to talk to a recruiter um, at, at, at an earlier opportunity. And another great thing about the platform is that when a candidate does consume job descriptions, our recruiters are alerted to that and therefore um, our recruiters can pick up the phone and talk to a candidate about a job um, without necessarily saying, I've seen you've just looked at a uh, job description about Java developer, but being able to play that into the conversation and, and, and know that that candidate is, is primed and ready to have a, a, a proper conversation with a recruiter about a job opportunity rather than have to start from scratch by explaining who Capita are, the things that we do, the things that we're, that we're um, uh, we're famous for in the particular industry that we might be talking to a candidate about and as i said in terms of the benefits we start to see a massive reduction in time to hire start to see how we can reduce our cost for hire because we're spending less on tactical advertising and actually increasing our quality of hire um, because we're actually bringing people into the organization that are engaged with our business, want to work with our organization. And if and when we add that to the, the stuff we're doing with Pocket Recruiter, 
um, whereby we're, we're identifying relevant people through Pocket Recruits platform. We've got a really great position whereby we're finding fantastically relevant and engaged talent to bring into our process. Um, so just to bring to life the Essex County Council um, case study, we provide uh, an RPO solution to Essex County Council. Um, social workers are a significant um, part of the recruitment that we do for Essex County Council and are, is also a particular uh, trouble point for us in terms of being able to convert relevant social workers into Essex County Council. And, and, and that's not an Essex County Council issue, that is a, a, a council issue look across the UK in terms of social worker recruitment. Um, before we started using Candidate ID, we had 270 social workers in our database, um, but we had a very limited relationship with those people. In fact, it's probably fair to say that we had no relationship with those people. Fundamentally, they'd previously applied or attended an event they were sitting in our ATS and we'd done pretty much nothing with them from that point on. So they were they were needing to be kind of re-engaged with Essex County Council and the potential opportunity for social worker uh, vacancies within the organisation. We, we weren't engaging with them on any basis, never mind regular basis. Um, and we had no idea within that 270 population which, which of those potentially would be interested in talking to us about opportunities. So actually, in terms of the opportunity we had, we've got lots of useful and relevant content for social workers. When we persona map a social worker, we understand the type of content that is going to resonate with them. And we actually, both through stuff that we were doing through other recruitment activity and stuff that was happening within Essex County Council, we had a, a, a good level of relevant content that we could use to develop a content strategy to re-engage these 270 social workers. Um, by using the Candidate ID platform, we had a much better way to distribute that content. We, we were able to do it from one place and we were able to automate that process so that we actually could, could define the content strategy and let the technology do the work for us rather than having to have people in the background sending out bits of content and hoping that that would resonate with the, with the audience. Um, the other key thing for us in terms of Candidate ID is that ability to track the candidates in terms of behaviour and performance. So we're understanding through the Candidate ID platform who is engaging with that content, what content are they engaging with, and if they're not engaging with it, we're able to push that content via different uh, mediums so that we can try and find different ways for that candidate to engage with the content. Um, and what that fundamentally meant is that it enabled our recruiters to spend time talking to the warm candidates. So again, as I said earlier, rather than trying to talk to a candidate that isn't at that stage aware of Essex County Council or what it would be like to work as a social worker at Essex County Council, our recruiters were able to actually spend time talking to people that had already been given that information and were ready to talk about working for Essex County Council. Um, so just bringing that to life in terms of um, how that works from a content strategy and a channel strategy. As I said earlier, fundamentally what we're looking to do is bring candidates through the funnel from awareness through to application. Um, and, and for me, awareness is all about getting candidates to know more about Essex County Council and to know more about the kind of structure and the environment and the kind of um, what Essex County Council is responsible for. And then you need to start educating people about specifically what some of their visions and values are, what it's like to live and work in Essex, um, what it's like to, to be a social worker for Essex County Council versus other organisations. And then you need to then bring them into that consideration stage and start actually introducing them to some of the principles around um, what we do at Essex County Council specifically within the adult social care department or the children and family team and introducing what it might actually be like to work in those environments. So they actually now are starting to consider what it might be like if I worked as a social worker at Essex County Council and from that point actually start engaging with them at the application stage by talking to them about jobs. Um, and as you'll see from that, in terms of the channels, there's a, a, a variety of channels that we're using, email, social media, our career site, um, uh, uh, webinars, 
uh, one to one meetings and, uh, and the like. So there was different ways that we was engaging with our candidates, but we was engaging with them at the right stage in the process based on where they were in the funnel. And, and you'll see from the content, there's lots of different bits of content that we built into that strategy, which enabled us to make sure that we could take uh, the candidates through that funnel with the right content at the right stage of the process. All of that content was scored, and that's what enabled us to identify the candidates that were most engaged, because depending on the content that they've um, consumed would give them a score and therefore we were able to index the, the, the engagement level of a candidate based on what they have or haven't consumed. So in the back end of candidate ID what that enables us to do and you, you'll see the names have been taken out obviously from a GDPR perspective but what you can actually start to see here is this ID score and what that is enabling our recruiters to do is very quickly target the candidates that are consuming the most amount of content um, you can filter on that you can look at when they were last active you can drill into an individual and actually start to see what content have they consumed when and how and that's really fantastic from a recruiter perspective because not only does that validate the fact that the candidate is actually engaged in the conversation and is consuming content but you can actually start to think about the conversation you then have with the candidate. Uh, so, for example, this particular candidate viewed Simon Feld's um, YouTube video. Now, without necessarily going into the conversation and saying, I noticed that you've seen Simon Feld's YouTube video, you can play into the conversation, the fact that we've got a fantastic video um, that Simon Feld's produced that we're hosting on YouTube. I don't know whether you've seen it, but it, it, it really gives a really great example of what the Director of Local Delivery is talking about um, Essex County Council. And that's a great way in to starting a conversation, knowing that actually that candidate has consumed that content. Um, and we can really shape a conversation, but also it then resonates back with the candidate that actually, yeah, I saw that video. I'm interested in that. Let's have a bit of a wider conversation. And that, that really helped our recruiters to to shape the conversation with the candidates at the point that they were starting to engage the, the candidates that we believed were relevant and engaged. So we ran that campaign over a six week period. Um, and as I said, we had 270 candidates uh, in the database in, in the first instance. Um, nine of those candidates updated their details via the campaign. And off the back of that, six of those were then identified as higher ready candidates. So they'd been taken through the funnel and got to the point of application stage in terms of um, uh, being ready to talk to us about jobs. And actually, we converted all of those six candidates. So, I mean, that's a massive impact, right? So we had 270 candidates in a database that were previously not engaged with our um, opportunities and were in effect sitting uh, kind of doing nothing in, 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 a, uh, in an ATS. And through this campaign over a six week period, we actually generated six hires. Um, and for us, that's a fantastic result. Um, in terms of the email performance, um, some really great email open rates. Um, so the first email that we sent out, 74% opened it, then 56% on the, on the second and on the, on the fourth, again, really fantastic results of 55% um, opening the, the email. Um, 83.5% of that 270 uh, candidates actually engaged with at least once and, and fundamentally 27% were highly engaged, i.e. scored more than five points based on how we'd scored the content. So for us, it was a fantastic way of taking what we already had in our database and in effect recycling it back into our process and generating hires off the back of it. And um, overall, in terms of some of the other things that we're doing within Essex County Council, because it's not just about what we've done with candidate ID, but it, but that has played a massive part in helping us to reduce our hard to fall vacancies by 75%, successfully filling 98% of our um, per roles using direct fill, reducing a tie, our time to hire down to 20 days, um, and reducing our re agency reliance from 40 to 15%. And whilst Canada ID isn't solely responsible for that, it has helped us to make a difference with number one, thinking about future planning for, from a pipeline perspective, because 
if we if we think about our future needs and we have candidate ID to support how we're going to engage and nurture that talent, it, it gives us the mechanism and the, and the platform to manage that effectively and efficiently. Um, and number two, taking what we already had in our database and actually re-engaging and nurturing them back into our process um, has been a, a, a massive success for us. And I guess that's all I would uh, really say, to be fair. So I don't know, Scott, whether there's uh, opportunities for questions. <clears throat> yeah hey that's great Richard thank you I've got so I've got questions and we've got questions that have come in um, from the audience so you you know you, you've obviously um, you know had you know you're running pipeline automation software and you've got experience of a direct experience of the power of, of, of what it can what it can do um, you know, and you talk about you know, you know, the, the moving, being able to now move away from that reactive, you know, tactical, always starting from scratch kind yeah. of process to a more proactive, you know, strategic pipelining one, um, which the you know, which the technology enables. How um, so? Firstly, what what roles you know would you um, would you consider are, are most applicable for this approach, and which ones are not? Um, I'm not sure that I would uh, say particular roles are, are or are not, but what I would say is that you've got to be clear on making sure that you're not trying to pipeline for everything because it, it, in an organisation like Capita, where we are recruiting at a professional level about 4,500 hires a year across lots and lots of different role types, it, it's got to be about focusing our time and effort to the right stuff. So we kind of defined a rule that said if we are recruiting 10 of the same type in one location, that probably justifies developing a pipeline for it. And off the back of that, what we're then doing is, is getting under the skin of what that pipeline target candidate really looks like. So that's when we start to persona map that particular audience. And I, I guess through that exercise, depending on what we determine being the, the, the route to engage the way that that candidate would typically search out and find opportunities, may, out of the back of that, identify that there isn't a need to pipeline, because actually you can fulfil fairly straightforwardly through tactical advertising. So, you know, the, there's the combination of, have we got the volume right to actually make it worth our time and effort to go through that process of building a talent pipeline and secondly is there a need to talent pipeline that audience based on how passive active that audience typically are in in the market if that makes sense yeah no absolutely and how so once once you've decided yeah okay this makes sense okay we have 10 plus uh you know there's a real need um to engage you know I, you know maybe there's not that there's not that many active candidates or they're um you know they're um, they're they're heavily in demand or yeah. um so we need to be more proactive we need to really um you know start to think about how can we you know get people from being passive to active etc and how can we get passive like so once you've decided that okay yeah we are going to build it we want to build an active and a vibrant you know talent pipeline um, knowing what the technology can do, how, do, how does that change the way you think about how you're going to how you're going to engage them, okay? And and then how and what you can do to, to then convert them once you see they're engaged. So I think fundamentally, what it shifts our focus on is building an appropriate, relevant content strategy and allowing the technology to to engage the candidate on our behalf. Because actually, what we want to do and what we've shifted significantly through this process is enabling our recruiters to actually be spending the time on the phone talking to candidates that want to talk to us about opportunities rather than lots of lots of wasted time and effort reaching out to candidates that we're finding across different networks or platforms and trying to start a conversation before we've even warmed them up to the opportunity or to the or to the organization if that makes sense so for me the massive shift is allowing our content strategy to do all of the nurturing piece so that when our recruiters have a conversation with a candidate it's actually because they're ready to talk about a job and therefore our time spent talking to candidates is is has increased because we're talking to more candidates but we're actually talking to the right candidates at the right time and therefore it's a much more efficient process 
yeah, I mean, we talk a lot about, um, you know, the technology, the ability of the technology is there to do, you know, the majority of the heavy lifting, lifting in yeah. this, this bit of the talent acquisition stroke recruitment process. Um, and that, you know, we, we, we talk a lot about imagine how much, how much more productive your recruitment team would be if all the recruiters did was talk to people that were a great fit and actually wanted to work for you and just let technology do everything else. So now you've seen how it works. What are, you know what? What are you? What are the? What are the things that recruiters? You, you're seeing that recruiters are not doing. They can stop doing. You know, if they're spending, if they're spending like significant, almost all of their time talking to talking to candidates that want to work for you. You know, what can they drop? What are they doing less of? Um, so, what are they doing less of? I, I guess, I guess, fundamentally, they're doing they're doing less of the proactive sourcing. And starting from scratch in terms of the conversations that they have with candidates. So, so we are our strategy now is about identifying talent and putting them through a nurture process rather than identifying talent and picking up the phone to talk to them. If that makes sense. So, any of the proactive sourcing activity that we previously did, we're we're only we're only sourcing candidates that we've identified. If that makes sense. So they're coming into our database and being nurtured rather than us just finding a candidate on the CV database and trying to reach out to them at that point, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, we, and how, I mean, this whole, you know, the end-to-end -end process and, and, and how technology can, you know, can improve it. We talk a lot about, you know, the, well, firstly, it's going to save you, you know, saves time and money. Okay, you can uh, you can yeah. optimize the end-to-end -end process. You can condense it, and you can continually improve it. And then we also talk about you know first access to talent, first access to talent, competitive advantage. How, where, how do you you know how do you see the impact for Capita in both of those areas? Um, so if I take some of our other parts of the business, so our our IT resourcing business, which is a staffing business, that competitive edge of being able to reach out to talent that is going to convert into having a conversation with end client more efficiently and quickly is a fantastic advantage for us. So, so th there's two bits to that. There's the being able to find the relevant candidates, and that's where we see Pocket Recruiter playing a, a significant part in very quickly finding the people that match the requirement. But, but also knowing that we've been nurturing our database of talent with relevant and engaged content and we can see who is engaged means that, again, we're not, we're not wasting our time talking to candidates that aren't going to convert. We're actually talking to candidates that are going to quickly be interested and engaged and therefore enables us to put our shortlist of candidates into incline um, at a far, far greater pace, which, which from a competitive advantage perspective, puts our competitors at a, a, a second place position in terms of um, opportunity. Brilliant. Well, that is all the questions that um, I have, uh, you know, from me and also from, from the audience. So, yeah, we're on the half hour mark and um, I would like to thank um, Richard for joining us and, and, and sharing his, his great insights and experience and also everybody that um, joined us today. So the recorded version will be available. We'll, th we'll throw up on our website and um, and and you know promote links to it. So Richard, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, great case study and thanks again to everyone else. Thank you.